Um, Adrian, I saw you first. If you could introduce yourself, Adrian. Um, Adrian Cross from uh, Reuters um, for uh, Lady Ashton. Do you see any kind of a narrowing of positions on the uh, issue of the um, raising of the arms embargo to uh, supply more to the um, Syrian rebels at this meeting? And um, could I ask if you have any um, any comment on the uh, state of the negotiations with um, Iran following the expert level talks last week and um, some uh, declarations by uh, President Khamenei uh, saying that he would uh, hit at Israeli cities if attacked. Thank you very much. Adrian, can you just say that very last bit? Yeah, the, uh, the, there's some uh, comments by Khamenei a couple of days ago about that he would uh, hit at uh, Israeli cities in retaliation if he were attacked. Um, f first of all, I cannot uh, say how much we have a real sense of urgency about the situation in Syria and in the neighboring countries to it. So that sense of urgency translates into ensuring that we keep looking at everything that we're doing. When I met with Brigadier General Idris last week from uh, the, the Syrian, Free Syrian Army, we discussed the kind of support that he needed within the context of what we've said about technical assistance and non-lethal support. We're looking all the time to try and make sure our humanitarian aid is getting through in a situation where the numbers of refugees inside and outside the country are growing by thousands every day. So you should understand the real sense of urgency there is to try and find ways that we can ensure some political process, because that's what everyone agrees is going to be needed, to solve this, to stop the killing, and to move the country forward. Within that context, of course, member states want to talk about all the possible options. The focus has been perhaps on one of those. But if you were in the room, you'd have heard many, many uh, contributions about what we could do and how we can do more, working with Mr. Brahimi, working with uh, Sheikh Al-Hatib, looking at how to support the UN, looking at ways in which we can work with uh, the countries of Jordan, Iraq, Turkey, Lebanon. And you'll see the situation in Lebanon today. So please put it in that context that this is about making sure that we keep reviewing and looking at how best we believe we can go forward. And what was clear from everybody is that there has to be a political solution. The issue is how to help get there. And that's why member states need to keep this debate moving forward, to keep this debate uh, alive and real and discussing the situation as it unfolds. In terms of what's happening with the Iran talks, well, I've obviously had the reports back from the technical discussions. Their objective, as you know, is to simply be able to show nuclear physicists to nuclear physicists exactly what our proposals are talking about. They're not political negotiations. They are about explanation, so that when we meet again in Almaty, we can be confident that we have explained in detail what we are proposing to Iran and hope that Iran will come forward with a positive uh, answer to those proposals. I'm not going to comment on what comes out of Tehran by way of uh, statements and so on. Uh, my experience is to work with the Iranians when we meet, to work with them on the specifics and to, of course, seek a diplomatic solution. Take a question from the Irish based media. Is there any? No. Hervé, I know you had your, your, hand, your hand up there. Thank you. Hervé Amorique, France 24 Television. Uh, Mrs. Ashton, Mr. Gilmore, how important is it that the EU finds a meaningful position on Syria? Well, we, we have a meaningful position on Syria, but Eamon, let me give you the chance to comment on it. Um, yes, we do have a meaningful position on Syria. Um, the European Union has uh, taken a very strong, consistent position on Syria right from the very beginning. Uh, and that consistent position is, first of all, that we have to find a political solution uh, to the slaughter uh, and to the, the bloodshed that is taking place in Syria. From a very early stage, uh, the European Union adopted a range of uh, sanctions uh, to put pressure on the regime in Syria to respond to uh, the moving forward of, of that uh, political uh, uh, position. Uh, it is the view of the European Union that we need to get a robust 
uh, position adopted at the uh, UN Security Council, and we have been in both individual member states and uh, the European Union has been advocating that. It has been the position of the European Union that we will have to have accountability uh, for what is happening in Syria, and that those who are responsible for the atrocities and those who are behind them uh, be called uh, uh, to account. Uh, as recently as three weeks ago, uh, we reviewed the sanctions uh, which, are, uh, which applied to Syria and extended them uh, up to the, the 1st of June. Uh, we will be uh, considering that sanctions regime again uh, between now and the 1st of June. All of the various options that have been talked about will be on the table, uh, and the object will be to um, uh, cause the Assad regime uh, to um, uh, to move with the political solution and to move with that political solution uh, around the uh, Geneva communique. I think Nicholas, you had a question. Nicholas, please. Put your hand up, Nicholas. Yeah. Nicolas Busse for Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. I've got a question for Lady Ashton on the upcoming review of the External Action Service. Um, from your experience over the past three years, what would be the most Im Im important reform that should be considered? Well, there are, there are different aspects to <clears throat> the review in terms of what uh, we want to achieve, but I think the most important reforms are about ensuring that when we look back uh, that we've got the right inter-institutional framework. And by that I mean that um, you always have to be certain that you've got a relationship with all of the institutions that enables the foreign policy to develop and grow. I often talk about <clears throat> flying a plane without any wings while you're building the wings at the same time. Now we've got the plane, we need to make sure it can really soar. And to do that, we need to make sure that everything that we consider in our comprehensive approach to foreign policy is able to be done as effectively as possible. And that means with member states, with the Commission, with the Parliament, ensuring that the framework we've got works as uh, well as it might. And that means looking and being ready and willing to tweak or to change things as we look at in reality, could it work even better than it does now? Uh, final question, Nouradi. Nouradi Afridi from the Arabian News Channel. Lady Ashton, uh, in the set of sanctions that are non-military items by the end of this regime until the end of May, uh, would you consider the option of lifting the sanction uh, the civilian which uh, can allow member states and the European Union as a whole to provide uh, assistance to the Syrian in those areas under the opposition control by the end of May. It's quite, the acoustics are quite hard. Can I just check that what you're asking me is that in looking at the sanctions review, we would look at being able to provide assistance to specific areas in Syria. Is that, is that right? Thank you, Nuri. Apologies, it's just it's a bit hard to hear. <clears throat> really, just to repeat what I said, you know, the, the objective we have is a political solution that will stop the killing, humanitarian aid to get to people as quickly and effectively as possible. All of you will have been witnessing, and some of you through your media are, are drawing attention every day to the plight of the people and especially the children in Syria so important that people understand how much needs to be done. Um, in order to do that, the sanctions are one part of it. There's a lot of different things we have to do. Then we have to constantly look at our sanctions to make sure that we're able to support the people as effectively as we possibly can. And that means keeping, uh, reviewing every day, people who are far more expert in this than I would be, who understand how sanctions regimes work, to ensure that we're offering the best possible support we can to the people. But I say again, the sanctions regime is one part of this. The real challenge is how do we get the political solution that's going to be necessary that will enable the fighting to stop, the killing to stop, and people to be able to start picking up the pieces of their lives and their country with our help to try and get into the future. And all efforts on that are so important right now. The situation 
moves quickly. It's extraordinarily fragile, in my view, especially when you look at so many people now displaced, now coming across into other countries, where those countries themselves are going to need more and more help. We really have got to increase the efforts that are already underway to really try and get to that point now. I want to say thanks very much indeed for coming. Thanks to the Tornish and the High Representative, and very much thanks to the Presidency for an excellent meeting. Thanks very much. Thank you.